Hi there, it's me, Rochelle. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little more about fortune tellers and psychics and why the Bible says it's no no. So, sit down, get comfortable, get yourself a nice little coffee. It's not going to be a real long talk, but we're going to be chatting together. So, so I want you to be um, in a place where you can hear this and absorb it and understand that I'm not coming from a place of preaching. I'm coming from a place of knowing better is doing better because I used to do that. I used to get up and read those horoscopes and I used to, um, you know, fortune tell. <laughs> I, I read playing cards and told people their futures and sometimes it was right. Sometimes it wasn't right. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to tell you the difference between fortune telling and prophetic speaking. And it is a very different thing. And even though the people that you may be going to are saying, you know, they're doing it through God or the universe, that's not the same as having a prophetic word from God. Okay. God is not going to give you a prophetic word on, um, how to find your lost sock. Okay, <laughs> or ring or whatever it is. Okay, so let me just start with, um, I have a few th few verses here that I want to share with you. The first one, I mean, it's Leviticus. Leviticus doesn't tend to uh, pad things and make them more comfortable. None of the Bible makes it more comfortable for you, but Leviticus is pretty hard hitting. So it says in Leviticus 20, six um the esv version says if a person turns to mediums and necromancers whoring after them i will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people and in this way whoring after them means lustily feeling the need to go to them and paying for them okay um, in Leviticus 19.31, it says, Do not turn to mediums. Do not seek them out. And so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. And in Deuteronomy, it says, Deuteron sorry, Deuteronomy 18.10-13, through 13, it says this, There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or daughter as an offering and there's a reason why I'm, I'm talking about this anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead for whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord and because of the these abominations the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. So, Jesus came and, and your sins, if you accept him, are forgiven. But you can't continue with these things. Okay? Um, once you've accepted Christ as your personal savior, you're slapping him in the face every time you do something that is an abomination to his father. So one of the things I, I want to connect here is it says that there's um, those who sacrifice their children um, are equal to someone who goes to a sorcerer, charmer, or medium in God's eyes because these are all abominations to him. These are all things that you have to turn your back on the Lord to do, even if you don't think you're doing it. And when someone says, but, you know, the universe brings it to me, I put positive things into the universe and it comes back. I have to tell you that also is an abomination to God because the universe is one of his creations. Just like people are his creations. And if you choose to go to his creations for advice or 
to speak to because you think that something wonderful will come back if you if you and it sometimes it does but i'm going to tell you this right now god is a jealous god and he does not want you to choose his creation over him think of being a parent and you love your child and you have information for them and you want to share it with them but they continually turn their back on you and get that information from someone else at first you might be okay a little but after a while you're going to want your child to return to you you don't want your child to ask you of these things because you love them and no one loves them like a father or mother and god is our father so he wants so much for us, so much more than the universe can give. He is the giver of universes, right? So don't go to the universe, go to God. Um, it says here in, ooh, let's go with Chronicles. So Saul died for his breach of faith. He broke faith with the Lord in that he did not keep the command of the Lord and also consulted a medium seeking guidance. He did not seek guidance from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. So Saul was a king, a great king, and he had a wonderful relationship with the Lord. And sometimes God gets quiet. And perhaps some of that is to see what we'll do with it. If we will stay in faith, if we will remain in him, if we will keep coming back to him. And so he got quiet with Saul. But Saul was doing all kinds of things that were leading him into the darkness. And you can't face the light of God and walk towards darkness at the same time. It's impossible to face these two things at once. So Saul started complaining and wondering why God wasn't answering him. And, and he had had such a wonderful relationship with him. And he wondered, why? Why isn't God talking to me? And instead of praying and asking God until he got an answer, he said, fine, I'll get the answers myself. And he hired, he hoard out a fortune teller. A medium, someone who came and gave him the guidance that he should never have been looking to, to another human being for. You understand? We're just human. We don't need to go to another human. If we need guidance, we need to go to the maker, not to the maid. So Saul went and he did this. And God was hurt and he was so hurt that he pushed Saul away. And in the darkness of that Saul choosing other than God, he went to his death. See, there's life in the light and there is death in the darkness. And Saul chose death. God doesn't send anyone to their death. He gives them the option of choosing him. And if you don't, then yeah, that's where you go. Now, the other thing is that in that verse that I find very amazing is that it shows here that if we don't follow our God-given path, then God has the backup plan. And he always gets his way because he's God. And if we don't follow that path, he will find someone who will. And in this case, it was David of David and Goliath fame. And David honored God. And he stood up against giants because he knew he could. He had God within him. So today I tell you, don't look to man for what God can do for you. There is nothing that another person can tell you 
or teach you that the Lord can't teach you better <laughs> or give you more of. And I will not, I'll, you know, I know sometimes you go to those fortune tellers and sometimes they're right. But the difference between a fortune teller and a word from God is this. Fortune tellers are right sometimes. Because they get their information on, either from their own mind or from a nefarious place. But God's prophetic word is right 100% of the time. Got it? So if someone comes to you with a prophetic word, you can test that in two ways. You can ask them. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he is the Messiah, the Savior, that he came? He was born of Mary. He was born of virgin. He lived until he was 30. He started his ministry at 30, but he was crucified at 33. And then he rose again to sit at the right hand of the Father. Now, if someone looks at you and says, well, you know, I believe this part of that and this part, that part of that, and they don't believe the whole thing, you can't trust that what they're saying is a word of God, from God. And the second thing is, you know, this is the pretty, this one's the easy part. If what they're saying is even an ounce wrong, then what they're saying is not of God. Okay, so test the word that people give you read about it if it doesn't match up with what's it, what it says in the bible it's not of god if it doesn't match up with what the holy spirit is saying within your heart it's not of god test those spirits okay and i just want to say to you that no matter where you're at god is with you no matter what you need he is there and you are loved you are never alone Okay, God bless. Thank you for stopping by and watching this uh, Let's Talk. See you next time. Bye-bye.